I think there's going to be a tornado. Nothing to worry about. Jordan, eat your heart out. For the sake of 100 quid or so, definitely say it's worth it. Perfect. Welcome back, guys. Hope you're having a good week so far. Just up past Peterborough. Uh, we have had to go wholesalers this morning, so it's a little bit later in the morning. Got a really interesting job for you today. Actually doing a hypervolt, and it's about five meters from the fuse board. So I don't think you've seen anything like that before. So um, we'll try and go a bit more into detail on how I'm installing it and try to give you some tips. So our hypervolt, for height reasons, I think the client did want it originally around here because the car parking space is right in front. But obviously I want to stick it to the 1.2 to 1.4 meters. I sort of said if we can move it over, which he's happy with, I mean, it's still next to the space. And then getting the cable across discreetly, I think if we can bring it down and actually dig a little trench under all this shingle, we can actually get it along. And I'd like to be able to feed it up in here with the incomer, so it's just something less on the wall. If we're lucky, we should be able to fish through into the back of the board with the tail, so I'm gonna give that a go. So that's got the less load, because that's all 32s. Move one of these six out, it's pretty secure. It'll, maybe the smoke detectors, we'll put in with the light in so they can't be turned off on their own, which a lot of people do. We'll put our breaker in there, and if we can get the cable through the void, that would be really good. So I've made a bit more of an access hole here and there is some sort of membrane where the tails are poking through but if I can get the rod through I should be able to get the cable through. So we'll give it a go, if it doesn't work we'll go to plan B. I think we're gonna have to come out the board and try drill out. So always good to try what you think might be the best option first. And if it doesn't work, just have a rethink and try something else. At least we can say, obviously, it would have been nice to go through there and not have any sort of cable or trunking on show. But um, if it doesn't work, just go to your best option, which is next. It should come down about here bottom corner somewhere and then if we can we could come along down and I'm not saying that's a bit tighter. We could run around the front of that actually. Okay so we was gonna try fish through this cavity into the meter box but the tail sort of wind round a bit wasn't really sort of straightforward, but it was good to give it a go. Obviously you don't know to try. So plan B is, I've marked out roughly the bottom corner of the meter cupboard. So I'm gonna to have to do a bit of trunking from the floor, sort of up to the top of the board, do a 90, come in the side, and then at least the cable's concealed and you've not got sort of like, it all clipped and on show. It can be decorated. Obviously this is undergoing some decoration at the moment anyway, so it can all be blended in. So I'm just gonna drill the pilot hole through now and this hilty bit is great for that. I don't think the magnet's getting a good enough hold on this basket. <laughs> About the cool. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what I've done is I've just set my laser up. It's good when drilling a pilot hole, if you can keep it, the drill bit, sort of as level as you can, you know you're gonna come out where you want on the other side. Because if you do it by eye, it's quite easy to sort of be pointing it a certain direction without really realizing and you'll end up coming out five centimeters too high on the other side or something so um yeah it's just good little tips that sort of help you out along the way sometimes gotta keep the boss happy protect my ears jordan eat your heart out <laughs> even though it was a straight drill but yeah come out spot on with my measurements so always good to measure a couple of times I want to open that up to the same size as a cable. I'm just going to get a couple of bigger drill bits to open that hole out for the cable. I know a few people have asked about what these are for storing. Well, I've just got them in for storing drill bits. It's perfect, just clips in. But they're actually for holding horse whips. 
I think you can pick them up on online for a few quid. So um, it's just a good little thing to add to the racking on your van. Keeps it all neat. Okay, so what I was going to do is basically you've got to think about where you're going to put the CT clamp. So there's sort of two options really. I mean, neither of them are great in my idea, sort of. If I joined the EV Ultra in a whisker box in the meter cupboard, people are going to moan about putting something in the meter box. And then I could have sort of run twin and earth to the board, joined into a whisker box, EV Ultra, and then the data cable could come out and clamp around the meter tails. People aren't going to like that. So the other option is run this straight into the board, but then your data cable's got to be connected to your CT clamp and clamp into the tail in the board. I don't think that's great either. So until something sort of improves and a different system comes out, I mean, it's one or the other. I mean, you could stick the whisker box below the meter cupboard, but then that's gonna look horrible. So yeah, you can't win in this situation. Um, let me know in the comments sort of what you would do. Um, it's good to get different sort of options and see how people do things differently. But rather than stick something in here, I've gone with going straight to the board. It's just what I've chose, so. Okay, so I'm actually gonna unscrew this, otherwise that's gonna be long. So I've managed to get this through the meter cupboard, get it down the same cap in as the incomer. If you don't like it, I don't really care. It's better hidden in there than it is clipped surface and it's another thing on show. There's space in there, it's not doing any harm. So I've gone with that. And what I'm gonna do, this is high tough cable. It's not armored. No one's gonna be digging. It's literally just going under this window seal. So I'm gonna dig out some of this shingle, run it under, so there's no clipping on the brickwork and it's literally just going to get clipped up to the charger. I think that's, in my opinion, the best looking way of doing it. All you're going to see is the cable going up and the charger. That's it. So I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I'll start pulling this out. Hello. <laughs> Just to save anyone a few seconds rummage around in your tool bag, it's a 2.5mm hex key you need to undo these. So obviously we'll go centre between the gutter and the window. So what have we got? Five, six, right there. Five, six. Yep. And then... So what we've got 1200s there, 1400 is the top of there, so let's see what looks best. I think about if we do the base for the top of this brick, I think that's sort of a nice height. About 1400, that's good for me. Just a little tip with the hypervolts, obviously, because you've got to hook the top two on before you can mount the bottom two. Just to know that it's spot on and level, I think it's good measure the distance. And then when it's on the wall, sort of, that's my distance between my two holes. That's my center line. So if I go on my center line, as long as I know I've leveled my two holes at the top, so I'm gonna drill that hole, drill that hole. It will hook on. I know that's perfectly level then. And then I can mark my bottom two. It's a bit of faffing around the whole install procedure, but once you know you've got it right, then it's just nothing to worry about. That's on there nice, so now I can mark these bottom two, which I'm gonna have to use the marksman. I'm 
just going to second fix the charger end, clip that down. I mean, it's all buried nicely now. The wind's picking up, so I think there's going to be a tornado. At least we're in the warm doing the DB side. So you can see I've actually used the laser a good couple of times today. It's definitely something really handy that I find to keep on the van. So I'd say that's got to be tool of the day. I mean, most people have them now anyway, but I started off with a chalk line and this is a massive, massive time saver. So um, I would like a green one, Jordan. <laughs> but um, no, I use this all the time. So if you haven't got one for the sake of a hundred quid or so, I'd definitely say it's worth it. Okay, so we've got a 80 amp fuse feed in this house. So something I had to call up Hypervolt to find out myself is this little dial here with the numbers is to set your grid limit for your CT clamp. Luckily their custom service is really helpful. Basically these numbers correspond to the dial inside. So we've got an 80 amp incomer, so we want to set it to number seven it will cut out and stop charging if the house is using too much energy. We obviously don't want to blow the main fuse. It's just handy to see this, obviously, if you've got a 100 amp fuse, you go to number eight or whatever you want to set it to, you can uh, look at this table and go from there. I'm going to set it to number seven. I'm going to put this bit of MT4 up. I'm going to take it straight down to the skirt in just so it's like a nice length in the corner. I haven't got any bends on me, so I'm going to just mitre it round into there. That's where cork or silicon's your friend. You can uh, just make it look all nice and neat. And at least then you've just not got a big horrible cable on show. So um, we'll get this all cut up and you can see how I do it. So what I've done is I've stripped this up short because it's going to be in trunking. Obviously I don't have to gland it into the board, it can just go in inside the trunking. So I'm going to actually leave the data cable in the trunking with just the CT cable coming out the board and then I can do the connection for that inside there rather than in the fuse board. The cameraman just asked a good question. So he said, why is there a data cable in there? Basically, this CT clamp is what's going to go around the incoming live conductor or line, um, and that's going to measure how much amps is being used throughout the whole property, and if the car charger needs to be sort of ramped down to prevent the main fuse blowing. So I said to him, basically, it's, it's literally only a small two-core cable. It's just for communicating to the charger, so there's no need for it to be a big, thick cable that's going to be car carrying like a load. So it's just sort of something minimal just to take the message to the charger really. Just connecting the other end up into the board now. So there's not actually any spare ways on here. So the plan is to, I mean, this break is slightly different than the others. So we're gonna get rid of that one and that's only doing a smoke alarm. So we're going to put that in with the lighting, which isn't a bad shout actually, because when they're on their own, people tend to turn them off because nuisance like cooking and stuff, setting them off. So if they're on with the lighting, they're not going to turn their lights off, are they? So um, we're going to move that into that. So our 32 amp can go into there. And then also we're going to change the RCD to a type A. So 
that's everything put away now. Just doing the test results and then I'll go plug the EV tester in and make sure the charger's all working as it should. And we'll do the app and everything with the customer and make sure they're all happy with that. Right guys, that's the end of the day. I'm not gonna lie, when I turned up and see, I was sort of scratching my head about the best way to get the cable from the board to the charger. But I think after trying a few different ideas, I think it's turned out really well. Literally, that's all you can see. So I'm happy with that. You just gotta work with what you're given sometimes and make the best of it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you managed to get some little tips that I might have helped with. See you on the next one.